about to hear a very personal and compelling story about how a needle stick injury forever changed the life of one individual and her family. As a nurse, Diane Moyer dedicated herself to saving the lives of others. And then one day, everything changed. Well, it was really, in my case, more like over the course of many days. <laughs> I did not suffer just one needle stick injury. Two of them were actually identical. Um, at that time, the practice drawing blood from the donors, you all, in addition to the bag of blood, you have to provide hospitals with test tubes of blood that can be used for testing and cross-match. And the way that process occurred, the needle was removed from the donor's arm and inserted into the test tubes. And we had four or five tubes to fill, so you're inserting the needle into the tube, removing it, reinserting it into another tube and removing it four times. And during that process, um, sometimes you missed and stuck your finger. The rubber stoppers were hard, the needle would bounce off, there was no protection for your hand because you're holding the tubes in this hand. Was there no concern at that time that this could be dangerous? Was there was and there wasn't. It, um, were we you have just to naive remember, at that time? We were naive. This was before anybody ever heard of HIV. Mm -hmm. And that all came about during my time at the Red Cross. And certainly our procedures changed as education and knowledge became available. Um, in retrospect, we should have been more concerned about hepatitis C, which is in fact what I have. We did know at that time that you ran statistically a 10% chance of being infected with hepatitis if you received a blood transfusion. And that should have translated into danger signals for exposure to the healthcare workers. But quite frankly, it just didn't. Any idea why not? I think we, in many ways, were still in that whole mindset that the healthcare worker often has um, your own safety is second place. You're there for the patient. That's your primary concern, and, and you don't worry about yourself. Um, it's almost like a red badge of courage that you uh, you just put everything else out of your mind or what you're doing. What exactly does it mean to have hepatitis C? It's a very serious illness. Seventy to eighty percent of those infected with hepatitis C will go on to develop some form of chronic liver disease. Chronic liver disease and particularly cirrhosis and end-stage liver disease can be a devastating illness. I was very sick for a long time while waiting for that transplant. I was hospitalized nine times in six months. I developed symptoms like um, severe edema. I put on about 50 pounds of fluid in my legs. They were so swollen I couldn't bend them. I had a huge collection of fluid in my abdomen known as ascites. I became jaundiced. Your liver is involved in over 400 vital bodily functions and none of them were working. I wasn't making clotting factors. I bled all the time. I had chronic nosebleeds. I was nauseated. Couldn't sleep at night. Just unbearable itching sensations, muscle cramps. It was truly a living hell for it, 20 months. I was just going to say while this I went for 20 months. While I was waiting for my liver transplant in and out of the hospital. On several of those occasions, the doctors told my husband she won't survive to leave the hospital unless we find a donor, but somehow I did. My husband has been like a rock. I don't think I would have survived this without him. It was very difficult for my daughter. She was only 13 when I was, had my first transplant, and I've had two liver transplants as a result of this illness. Um, she spent her entire adolescence afraid that her mother would die at any time. And as I'm sure you know, adolescence is hard enough for yes, girls. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but that really added to it. But she survived it, and we're very close today. And I'm very proud of her. How have you dealt with uh, the physical and the psychological aspects of this? Uh, with my first transplant, I was hospitalized for six weeks. I was in the intensive care unit for 21 days on life support. Uh, but with my life literally hanging in a thread, I had major complications from that transplant. On several occasions, the doctors told my family I probably would not survive. Um, I had what I consider to be a nurse's worst nightmare, you know, to be awake and on life support and in an intensive care unit. Um, it was pretty frightening. And eventually, as I got sicker and sicker, I just became very sad. You know, for the first time, I was facing the end of my life. Having to, being forced to look at that, to examine it. 
and uh, I had to give up my career. I haven't worked since January of 1994. Lost a big part of my professional identity. If I wasn't going to be Diane Moyer RN anymore, who am I going to be? It was very difficult. I never thought something like this could happen to me as a result of a needle stick injury. And I'm sure that there are millions of nurses nationwide who don't believe that it can happen to them either, but it can. What do you say to those people? I say, never, do not, I beg you, do not underestimate the risk from a needle stick injury. Um, the risk is far greater than you can ever imagine. The consequences can be severe. As you said earlier, not every needle stick injury results in an infection, but when it does, it's not a mild infection. You know, it sounds almost too horrible to be true that this could happen from one needle stick injury, but I've lost seven years of my life. I've had almost three quarters of a million dollars in health care costs in the last seven years. I probably will never work again. And it's just devastating. And you multiply that by the fact that in this country today, there are estimated to be four million people infected with hepatitis C virus. Um, certainly a percentage of those are health care workers. Um, it's just mind-boggling. It's known as the silent epidemic, and it truly is an epidemic. I'm on treatment now that wasn't available to me five years ago, so there is at least a chance that we can eliminate this virus or halt its progress. That's why testing, follow-up, following an exposure is so important, because if I had known that I had this virus, shortly after I was infected with it, and if the treatment that it is available today had been available to me then, I probably could, even though I was infected, have avoided the serious complications of cirrhosis and liver transplant. Knowledge is power. Yes, it is. <laughs> Diane, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We can't thank you enough for having the courage to, to tell us what we need to know. Thank you.